Chairman, it's Helen Snell, Democratic Services. I can confirm that the live stream is now switched on. We are now live and ready to go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Well, a very good morning, everybody, and welcome to this virtual meeting of Cornwall Council's Standards Committee. Before consideration of today's business, I will outline the protocols for the meeting. Today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. If the Council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, I will adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue cannot be resolved, I will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded at a future date. If, mem if a member uh, experiences a technical issue, I will adjourn for a short period to try and re-establish their connection. As I call a member to speak, I will remind you to switch on your microphone. If for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic uh, officer will advise you. Please do keep your cameras and your microphones switched off unless you are speaking. I will indicate when we're going to move to a vote and the Democratic Services Officer will declare the result. All votes during this meeting will be done on a roll call basis. We do not have any public participation in the meeting today. However, the public can watch the proceedings by accessing the live stream via the link in the agenda on the Council's website. When a member has a declared a non-registrable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest, or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in, the, in a matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they will be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. Should the press and public be excluded from the meeting, members will be required in turn to confirm and declare that there are no other persons present who are not entitled to either hear or see consideration of the matter. To confirm, the procedure for today's meeting is that the committee members who wish to speak on an item should indicate an X in the chat box, with the exception of Don Wood, who can use the raise your hand facility, and also Tony Woodhams, who doesn't have the raise your hand facility or a chat box. Tony has been instructed if he wishes to ask a question to wait until someone has finished speaking and then say, Chairman, I wish to ask a question and I will bring Tony in at the appropriate time. Before we start the meeting, I will ask the Democratic Services Officer to ask the committee members to confirm they are present and their electoral division. For non-elected members, they will need to confirm their name and their role on the committee, e.g. an independent member, parish town or council member or clerk's representative. So I will ask our Democratic Services Officer now, please, to do the roll call to make sure we all know who's here. Uh, it's over to you now, please, Angela. Um, hello, Angela Saunders here from Democratic Services. Uh, Councillor Wills, we know you're here, but if you could let us know your um, electoral division. Yeah, Councillor Paul Wills, St Colour Major Electoral Division, Chair of the Standards Committee. Councillor Jenkin. Yes, uh, Councillor Jenkin, um, Crowan and Wendron Division. Councillor Alvey. Councillor Martin Alvey, uh, Fiop and Plain Place Division. Councillor Frank. Good morning all, I'm Hilary Frank, I represent Saltash South. Councillor Gammon. Good morning, uh, Councillor Jackie Gammon, Bob and St Mary's Division. Councillor Nicholas. Good morning, uh, Councillor Sue Nicholas, representing Marazine and Perinathno Division. Councillor Pugh. Good morning, I'm Richard Pugh and I represent the Trelawney Division. OK, I'll move on to our other members, if you could confirm your role on the committee. Cap um, Robert Bishop. Rob Bishop, lay member, independent. Reg Davison. Good morning, Reg Davison, independent lay member. Meryl Dean. Good morning, Meryl Dean, independent lay member. David Edwards. Yeah, Dave, Dave Edwards, um, Botus Funding Parish Council. Uh, Don Wood. Yes, Don Wood, uh, representing Millbrook Parish Council. And um, Anthony Woodhams.
You're muted. We can't yeah. hear you. Jenny. Mr. Woodlands. You go again, please, Tony. Yes, Tony Woodham's uh, representing uh, town and parish councils. Um, we do have a few other members, but, but they're not present here at, um, today. I will just um, introduce all the officers. So obviously we have myself, Angela Saunders from Democratic Services, um, and my colleague Helen Snell from Democratic Services, who is producing the meeting. We have Simon Mansell, the Corporate and Information Governance Manager, Melanie O'Sullivan, the Service Director for Assurance and the Monitoring Officer, uh, Matthew Stokes, Head of Legal, Eleanor Garraway, Corporate Governance Officer, and Jennifer Payne, Head of Com Customer Experience and Improvement. And I think that's everything, Chairman. Lovely, thank you, Angela. So we will move on to uh, the agenda. Apologies for absence, please, Angela. Uh, yeah, I've had one apology from Councillor George Truebody. Thank you. Declaration of interest in accordance with the agenda. Any members have a declaration of interest that they are to declare it now, please? I'll just wait a few seconds for anyone that may wish to declare an interest. If you don't, I see no indication, so we will move on. Minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of January, which is in your packs, members, on page one through till seven. Um, I will go through it page at a time. All I'm asking is that if you have any questions on the accuracy of the minutes, please could you indicate with the X in the box um, in the case of Dom, if you could put your hand up, please. And in the case of Mr. Williams, uh, just shout out if you have any questions or queries. Any questions or queries, please, members, on page one of the minutes of the meeting that was held on the 17th of January 2020. Any questions or queries on page one? Page two. Page three. Page four. Five. Six. And page seven. I propose the minutes be accepted as a true and accurate record of the meeting held on the 17th of January. I ask my vice chair if she is happy to second that proposal. Councillor Jenkins. Very happy to second that, uh, Chair. Thank you. We will now go to a recorded vote. Angela, if you can ask the members, please, if they wish to vote in favour or against accepting the minutes. Uh, Councillor Wilms. Four. Councillor Jenkin. Four. Councillor Alvey. Four. Councillor Frank. Four. Councillor Gammon. <coughs> Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. Councillor Pugh. Four. If that's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you. And I can see that Melanie Franks has now joined our meeting. So a very good morning to you, Melanie. Um, I'm glad you've sorted out your technical issues. Um, are you there, Melanie, first of all? Can you hear us? Melanie Franks, are you there? Can you hear me? We'll have to come back to Melanie at some point. OK, moving on to item agenda number four, which is a consideration of failure to uh, apologise Councillor Tudor. I will remind members that we go into this open minded. Uh, members have had a chance if they wish to, to declare interest 
No one has done so, so I take it you're all going into this with an open mind. It's also very important for members to remember uh, to keep this on board that we are not actually looking at the two decisions that have been made. We are only looking at councillors uh, Tudor's failure to apologise. So that's important for you to remember members. The decision notices that have been issued have already been made. We're not looking at that. We're only taking into consideration of a failure to apologise by Councillor Tudor. Can I ask, uh, sorry, Simon Mansell, please, uh, to start, Simon. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, with regards to the report, that does set out to the members why the matter has come before the committee. Um, and as the chairman has already said, uh, it also sets out that this is not a consideration of the um, previous matters, but a consideration of whether uh, there has been a failure to apologise by the committee. It also sets out that this is not a hearing, um, but there is a need for the committee to consider a procedure to follow to ensure that all the sides can be heard and the decisions can be made. To that end, at paragraph 2.9 of the committee, a procedure has been drafted and the recommendations before the committee are split into two parts. The first part asks the members to consider recommendations one to three, which will allow the committee to adopt the procedures. And then following that, the chairman will then take you through the rest of the procedures to allow then the submissions to be made by uh, the head of legal, who was the assessing officer of the last decision notice. The submissions be made by the subject members, Councillor Tudor, and then for members to go on and then to consider the matter in closed session, taking advice from the monitoring officer before coming back out of closed session to announce the decision and the reasons for it. Um, I believe that the, the um, reasoning for this is set out clearly in the report and paragraph 2.9 should be self-explanatory, but I'm happy to take any questions on the procedures themselves. Otherwise, it will be for the committee to vote on uh, recommendations one to three in the report. You're muted, Chair. Thank you, Simon. Yes, uh, I was about to say thanks for that lovely. Day. Um, as members can, can see, the recommendations are one to three that the procedure set out in paragraph 2.9 of the report is adopted with a determination of the referral <laughs> failure to apologise, that the procedures set out in paragraph 2.9 of the report is adopted for other referrals of failure by members to comply with the code of conduct decisions, and that the committee proceed to determine the substantive issue of Councillor Tudor's failure to apologise at this meeting. I'm going to ask now if any members have any questions of what Simon has said to indicate now with an X in the chat box or in the case of uh, uh, Don to put your hand up or Tony Williams to, to speak to say you have a question. Anyone have any questions of what Simon has laid out for us before we go to vote on recommendations one to three? I think it's all fairly straightforward. Uh, if you read paragraph 2.9, um, uh, section one through to uh, section seven, it is fairly straightforward. Yes, uh, Professor Dean, you have a question. Yeah, um, it's quite clear that this isn't a rehearing, but could you just remind us um, of the uh, potential recommendation or yeah, the, the legal officer will do that. The head of legal will do that when he comes to speak shortly. Thank you. Thank you. There appear to be no other questions, so I'm going to propose that the committee. Chair, uh, there's a question from Rob Bishop. Oh, I can't see that. Sorry, yes, it's just come through online. Sorry, Rob, you have a question. Yes, uh, I'm pretty certain it's already been done because of the uh, two previous meetings and the uh, conclusions that were found, but it doesn't say anywhere in here the last time uh, the councillor had code of conduct training. We, we can cover that during the course of the discussion, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Then I'm going to propose that the committee accept recommendations one to three, uh, as already read out. Um, Councillor Jenkins, are you happy to second that? Happy to second that, Chair. Thank you. And Angela, can we please now go to a roll call vote of members uh, to confirm if they are for or against recommendations one to three? Uh, Councillor Wilms. Four. Councillor Jenkins. 
Four. Councillor Alvey. Four. Councillor Frank. Four. Councillor Gammon. Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. Councillor Pugh. Four. I can confirm that that's unanimous, unanimous Chairman. Thank you very much, members. I will now ask uh, the Head of Legal, uh, Matt Stokes, to uh, join us and to uh, outline the report. Matt. Chair, do we not need to go into closed session first? No. No, we don't go into closed session until we've heard from uh, uh, Mr Stokes. Okay. We've also heard from uh, Councillor Tudor and then the volunteer officer will give us uh, a pre say and then we will go into closed session. Uh, Matt Stokes, it's over to you, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, so if you just say, I seem to be having some uh, connection issues. So if necessary, I'll go off video, uh, but I'll, I'll persevere with it for the moment. Uh, so uh, good morning, members. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, so uh, the the complaint that I determined in January uh, was submitted by a number of people. You've got the, the decision notice in your agenda pack starting at page 15. Um, and uh, the genesis of it is the decision that was made in August 2019 at the Fen Councillor Tudor in breach of the Code of Conduct um, uh, because of the comments she'd made at a protest outside of County Hall. Um, uh, and I think members will be familiar with that already. Um, uh, the complaint, uh, I broke down into four parts. Um, first part was that Councillor Tudor hadn't issued a public policy within 28 days of the original August decision notice, uh, that she'd refused publicly uh, on 23rd of August to issue an, issue an apology, that she'd sent emails that were impolite, blunt or otherwise not considered appropriate, and that she'd been disingenuous about emails and pictures sent to her which she found unpleasant. Now, we can dispense with the third and fourth parts of those quite quickly, as I did in my decision notice, uh, because in my view they weren't made out um, and uh, it seemed to me that the complainants uh, weren't offering sufficient evidence and uh, had tried to second guess what information Councillor Tudor had ha actually had uh, and so uh, I took the view that they weren't in a position to to make those parts of the complaint out and so I made no finding a breach in relation to those. In relation to the first two parts, though, the failure to apologise and refusing publicly to apologise, I did find a breach of the Code of Conduct. And um, my response to that was that uh, the request to apologise uh, should be reiterated. Um, and as this was the second uh, visitation to that issue, uh, that if the apology wasn't made, the complaint uh, or the, that the failure to apologise should be referred to the committee uh, for consideration. Uh, the paragraphs of the code that I found breached were treating others with respect, uh, not conducting yourself in a manner contrary to the council's duty to promote and maintain high standards of conduct uh, and not doing anything that could reasonably be regarded as bringing your office or authority into disrepute. Now, I don't propose to go through all of the detail of that because you've got the decision notice before you and I've concisely set out the reasoning. Um, in relation to paragraph 210, not doing anything that could reasonably be regarded as bringing in your office or authority into disrepute, uh, I do think there's a, a legitimate interpretation that um, Councillor Tudor standing in the community could be damaged, thereby bringing her office into disrepute. I don't believe she's brought the council into disrepute. However, as set out at the top of page 18, I am concerned about um, the perception uh, Councillor Tudor's failure to apologise has had on the effect effectiveness of the ethical standards regime and the complaints process. Um, important, uh, it, it was really important to me to state when uh, making this decision and drawing together my decision notice 
that I was conscious of the fact that uh, Councillor Tudor had been subjected to some quite appalling behaviour from some members of the public over a prolonged period. Uh, and because of that, it didn't surprise me that she'd taken an entrenched position. Now, I'm not linking that uh, behaviour to the complainants. Uh, there's nothing to me uh, that suggests it was them. Uh, but that was an important point for me to reflect. Even so, I still believe it was correct to find Councillor Tudor in breach of the Code of Conduct and that uh, requesting an apology uh, was reasonable and proportionate uh, in the circumstances. And of course, the earlier August decision still stands. Uh, and so there are two requests in two complaint decisions for Councillor Tudor to apologise. Um, I think I'll leave it there, Chair, for now, but happy to take questions. Thank you. If you have a question, please remember to put next in the chat box, apart from, as I say, uh, Dom or Tony. Um, the subject member had the opportunity, uh, Mr Stokes, to appeal those decisions, but did not. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, ne neither uh, decision was met with a request for a review. OK, thank you. I'm just waiting to see if any members have uh, put an X in the chat box or indeed uh, raised their hands or if Tony Williams wishes to speak. And I can see Dave Edwards, Dave. And I can see you, Tony, I'll bring you in next. Dave Edwards. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Mr Stokes, on page 16, um, you say there's a technical breach of the code. Could you could you sort of explain that a bit more to me, please? Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can, Matt. Yes. Yeah, things are going a bit wobbly this end, Chair, so I'm going to stay off video. No problem. Yeah. So so I was trying to distinguish there, and perhaps my my language wasn't as as good as it could have been. The substantive breach was dealt with in the August 2019 decision notice. So that was the decision over the conduct, which was the words said at the protest outside of County Hall. So, so that's where the substantive decision was made. The decision I've made is almost a binary decision. Um, has there been a failure to apologise and is that a breach of the code? And so I've referred to it as a technical breach because I viewed it in that simple way, albeit taking into account all of the relevant circumstances uh, as they were reported to me. Uh, that was the reason I used that language. OK, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just two points, really. Uh, page 18. Uh, these are for Mr. Stokes. The first, the first one there uh, on the first paragraph seems to be something somewhat of a fishing trip, although uh, part of the allegation has nothing to do with the effectiveness of the ethical standards regime. And the second point on that, and it uh, refers to point four, um, you, you make it as a suggestion, you offer it up in your report, and yet it's never been, as I can find through this, it's never been offered up in any evidence whatsoever. And um, the, th the third point, if I may, uh, can you uh, assure me that the, the people who are listed as the complainants, that Councillor Tudor was made aware of their names and who she sh should apologise to, and it wasn't to be apology, an apology to the world at large. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Matt. Yeah. Uh, OK, so taking those in reverse order, uh, the names of the complainants are at the top of the decision notice and Councillor Tudor's had that, so she's aware of their identities. Um, the, uh, the, the comment on point four, I'm not sure that I quite understand it, um, and, uh, but I, I've proceeded on the basis of the complaint as presented and as made available to me, and of course, uh, members of the Standards Committee are at a disadvantage because they haven't seen the complaint material. They've seen the decision notice. Um, but I'm confident that what I've put, uh, put there accurately reflects the position and my interpretation of what was presented. Um, as for uh, the, the, the first full paragraph at the top of page 18, it's certainly not a fishing expedition and I, I don't quite understand that comment. Um, within the complaint, 
there was reference uh, to, um, and I forget the words used, but there was reference to um, the credibility uh, of the ethical standards complaints process um, if, if members don't um, comply with findings. Um, I can try and find the wording used, Chairman, if you just give me a second. Um, but if I don't find it easily, uh, perhaps we move on. Um, Uh, yeah, so the wording used in the complaint is, uh, we believe that in failing to comply with the assessment decision notice, Councillor Tudors brought the code of conduct into disrepute for a system of standards which can be so blatantly ignored, fails to draw any respect from the public or indeed those to whom the code applies. So not officially an expedition on my part and um, uh, directly addressing the point made in the complaint. Thank you, Matt. Anybody else, please? Yes, Professor D. Um, <clears throat> could you say whether or not Councillor Tudor at any time sought advice from officers as to how to go about the apology? Matt, are you aware of that? Of any? Uh, Tudor, yes, I think that's a question, question to Councillor Tudor, really. Uh, so, so I think that's that's a question for for both Councillor Tudor, Tudor and possibly also Simon. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, not one I'm able to answer. Simon, are you able to answer that? Um, with regards to the initial complaint that was made in August, I did have a conversation with uh, Councillor Tudor, as I believe Ellie did. The option with regards to the apology was open ended. Um, it was left to entirely at Councillor Tudor's discretion how she apologised and who she apologised to, as we didn't wish to put any officer recommendations before her. Thank you. I hope that answers your question, Professor Dean. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else then? Chairman, please? can I just come back in? Of course you can, Matt. I, yes. I, just, uh, yeah, I, I, just, uh, I think I've had a, a momentary lapse. Um, uh, I recall having a conversation with uh, Councillor Tudor and Councillor Painter uh, about uh, the issue of apologising um, and I touched on some general principles then that might have been of assistance to Councillor Tudor. I'm sorry that slipped my mind just now um, but Simon through what he was saying just jogged my memory. Okay thank you. There don't appear to be anyone else wishing to ask uh, Mr Stokes any questions so I will now ask Councillor Tudor to uh, please join us. I'm sure you're there, uh, Councillor Tudor, if you could put your uh, camera on for us and unmute, that would be most helpful. Um, and you now have a chance to address the committee uh, on your reasons why you feel um, you did what you did. It's up to you. The, the floor is yours. Thank you. Can you see me OK? I've yeah, not come see, up we my... can hear you fine. Lovely. Um, so good morning, Chair and committee members. Um, I hope that you've had time to read the statement that I've submitted. Um, it includes a transcript, thank you. It includes a transcript of my interview with BBC Radio Cornwall, which led to the initial complaint against me. And I provided that as context because I know that you're not considering that matter. Uh, for more than two years before the day of the protest at County Hall that triggered the chain of events that's led to you considering the matters today and continuously since, I've been subject to abuse by certain specific individuals. This has been online, via emails, directly to me and many others, you may have seen some of them, and on social media. In the period of time between the day of the protest and the day I received the decision that I breached the code of conduct, I'd estimate that the abuse had escalated tenfold, including several misleading and slanderous online petitions on the change.org website, the stress of the ongoing situation might have affected my handling of the decision making. And you might be thinking, if I didn't agree with apologising as I was directed to do so, why didn't I request a review of the decision? Well, perhaps I should have, but as my statement says, I've been wrestling with matters and didn't reach that conclusion within the time constraints. I noted that in January this year, the governance officer decided that I was in technical breach of the code of conduct and today 
you're being asked to consider the circumstances relating to my failure to apologise, and which I hope my statement has helped you to understand. So you'll soon be debating whether or not to take any further action. I'm sure you'll appreciate that I've already suffered and the toll it's taken on myself as a person, as a counsellor and the impact on my family. And I'm placing my trust in all of you to reach a fair and just decision given all the circumstances that you're now aware of. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tudor. Councillor Elvie, you have a question. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Councillor Tudor, um, clearly you've explained the, um, the the level of emotional um, distress that this this episode's caused you. Have have you been able to access any pastoral support yourself, either through through your um, your political group or through our council officers, um, to to help you through what's clearly been a very uh, difficult time for you, and perhaps to help you um, sort out in your own mind how you're going you you you're going to perhaps go about uh, responding to the complaint against you and and the decision that was made. Well, thank you for that question, Councillor Alvey. Um, no, I haven't um, been offered or had access to any pastoral support. Thank you. Councillor Tudor, we, we can see at the top of page 15 of our report uh, the names of those complainants, uh, those who made the complaints against you. Are any of them known to you? Uh, yes, I uh, recognise some of the names from some of the um, correspondence and the abuse that I've had and the trolls on, on social media, yes. Councillor Nicholas, you have a question soon. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I've just turned over the page, so I'm just looking for my question. <laughs> ah, right here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Councillor Tudor, when you had notification of the um, decision to ask for an apology, um, did you not um, take up the offer that is usually sent out with that to talk with a um, independent person? Um, yes, um, that's part of the procedure. Um, I did talk with an independent person. At that point in the process, it was um, to determine um, whether or not I needed to apologise, I think. So you're talking about quite an early stage in the process. Yes, um, I contacted in, an independent person. That's part of the process, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to yes. make sure that you'd utilise that. And then yes. also, um, I know it's it's very difficult and it's very difficult circumstances that you find yourself and emotionally it's bad. Um, but did you, you know, why did you not ask for a review? I think I just, I found it actually quite difficult to accept the decision um, straightforwardly. And I just, I, I couldn't figure out who I was supposed to be apologising to. The decision didn't make any sense to me um, and I, I just thought really, I just thought that the minds had been um, made up um, with the officers and I just I didn't come to um, in hindsight I think I should have asked for a review but with everything that was going on at the time I just couldn't I couldn't make sense of the decision and I didn't come around to that way of thinking within the time. Okay thank you. Councillor Tudor, we're all, of course, used to demonstrations outside of County Hall. That's part and parcel of uh, the job that we do as councillors. I remember the day very well, um, and I would estimate there was a good 60, maybe 70 people outside of County Hall that day. Would you agree with that number? Uh, and yes. obviously, yeah, you, 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 you would have recognised a few faces in the crowd. Is that fair to say? Yes, I did. Yeah, I noticed I, I noticed a specific end and my attention was brought to particularly one individual who had a banner with my name on it, um, saying that I shouldn't be made um, chair of the strategic planning committee. The vote was just about to happen that morning. But it's fair to say that out of that 60 members or member, members of the public that were at that demonstration, and I'm just using that as a ballpark figure because like I said I, I recall of the meeting there was a lot of people at the end. They were up on the bank, if you remember. Um, when we started the council meeting and they mm. were up on the bank. Um, but out of that 60 people, there's a few that you recognise, but the overwhelming majority of people there you wouldn't have recognised or you wouldn't know. Is that fair to say? 
That's right. That's why in my um, that's why in my interview I said apart from a few select people Thank here, you. there are people that I recognised. Yeah. But of course, uh, when it comes to radio, they edit down bits from news clips and things like that that they put on the top of the hour, and you know, and and, and they put in there. Councillor describes protesters as sinister underbelly of Cornish nationalists. You know, that, that's a fair comment because that's what the media do. They look for that strap line, don't they? That 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 sound bite. As it they were. do, but if, if you listen to actually what went out on the radio, the whole of the um the clip, it actually clearly says, I'm I clearly say that I'm just referring to a few of the people there who I recognise and I also express um my empathy and that i agree with the majority of people there would you also agree though that there may be members of the public there who would not consider themselves to be um the sinister underbelly of cornish nationalists would you agree with that statement absolutely and i think that's what i made clear um if you listen to the whole clip um that's what i made clear and it's really unfortunate that those people have been um, led to believe that I was referring to all of them, but the clip actually clearly shows that I wasn't. Thank you, Councillor Tudor, that's most helpful. Any other questions then, please, members for Councillor Tudor, indicate now with a cross in the box or in the take. Uh, thank you very much, Rob Bishop, followed by Professor Dean. Rob first, please. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Uh, Councillor Tudor, would you agree that the um, statement you made this morning is essentially a statement of mitigation and you accept that the two um, findings earlier in August that you were informed of were actually true and that you failed twice to take a review? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't completely understand that question if you're able to put that another way sorry yeah i can repeat it yeah um would you agree that the charges um which are based on the code of conduct the two charges actually happened and you were found guilty of those two charges well though that's fact isn't it that's why we're here today so i can't disagree with that good and then the second bit is, would you agree that the statement you've made this morning is a mitigation about why, what happened and how you felt? It's merely a mitigation. Um, I would say that the statement I've made this morning uh, puts matters into context, which enables you then to go on and have a fair debate and reach um, a, a fair decision. Thank you. In my view, that's a mitigation. Um, and the, the reviews, you have um, twice been offered the chance to make a review and twice you haven't done it. That's right, once actually, and I haven't, yeah. That's all, thank you. Professor Dean. Yes, uh, it's Meryl Dean here. I come to this fresh. I know nothing of the history because I joined the Standards Committee in January. Um, but you just heard the uh, officers say that uh, I think both of them said they had a conversation with you about the apology process. Could you confirm that that was the case? Um, I did have a conversation um, with Matt Stokes and um, Adam Painter was there. And I believe Melanie uh, O'Sullivan might have been there as well. Um, I was um, advised to apologise in that conversation and I was advised of ways that I could apologise, which I deemed to be sort of disingenuous. So, uh, sorry, could you clarify why disingenuous? Um, well, uh, oftentimes you see um, politicians um, make a non-apology apology. Um, I'm not sure if you know what I mean by that. So, you know, I'm sorry if I offended. Um, but my feeling was um, that I wasn't prepared to um, apologise in any way um, to the people that had um, subjected me to that stained abuse. They knew who they were. I knew who they were. Um, and so, um, I wasn't, I wasn't going to go down down that road of a disingenuous non-apology apology. So is it 
fair to say that your position is that you do not want to apologise in any form? That's right. I do not want to apologise in any form to the people that I was referring to on that day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Could I ask you, Rob, to switch your camera off again, please? And also, Professor Dean, if you could switch your cameras off again. Thank you. Um, I can see no other X's in the chat box, uh, and I can see that Don Wood has not uh, Don Wood has not indicated to speak, and neither has Tony Woodhams. Um, so um, I thank you, Councillor Tudor. You can hang on there. Oh, sorry, Simon Mansell has just come in. Simon. Mr Chairman, um, as I, I referred earlier to a conversation I had with Council Children, I would like to clarify that myself and Ellie Garraway did offer um, some support to her. It may not have been substantive, but by this time we were aware of some of the um, unsavoury uh, emails that Councillor Tudor was getting and I would support the comments on those and that um, I did offer to report those to police for her as we always would offer to all members uh, to do that sort of action. Um, it, 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 it is something and I would agree that since then that, that there were some conditions which we felt should have been reported to police, but I understand that Councillor Tudor reported those herself. Yep, we've got nods there from Councillor Tudor. Thank you, Simon. Thank you very much. Uh, there are no other indications. I'll just give it a couple of seconds if anyone does decide to jump in very quickly. No, it's not looking like there is, so I will ask uh, our monitoring officer, please, uh, uh, Melanie Sullivan, to... Chairman, it's um, yeah. from Democratic Services. I'd just say that um, Don Wood has had his, got his hand raised. Yeah, I can just see it's just come through on mine, so just hang on a minute, Mel, so sorry, it's just come through on mine, just that second. Uh, Don, you, can you put on your camera now, please, and your microphone, and you uh, have a chance to put your question to Councillor Tudor. Good morning, Councillor Tudor. Morning. My name is Don Wood from Millbrook Council. Hello. Um, you make the point in your uh, uh, declaration as to who you should apologise to, and I'm still rather confused about this. Have you been specifically advised who you should make an apology to? No, this this is this is the confusion, isn't it? This is I, I am confused. Who am I supposed to be making apology to? Because um, I'm deemed to have offended, um, you know, the uh, protesters um, on the done on the day. I think that's what the um, decision. Um, maybe Matt can come in and and say the, the decision who I was supposed to have offended. Um, but of course, I, I didn't offend the majority of the protesters there today. It was specific individuals, um, and that that's why the. Um, request to apologise didn't make any sense to me. You, you know, who am I supposed to have offended? I made it quite clear in the in the BBC radio interview um, that I was sympathetic and empathised with most of the people there who were protesting about overdevelopment and unaffordable housing. Um, it was the specific individuals who had um, whipped up and twisted my words um, and you know brought these complaints against me um, that I. Um, refuse to apologise to. I'm oh, sorry, does that make sense? Uh, I think it does, but my question was, were you advised specifically who to apologise to? No. Right. Okay. Well, very much. Matt Stokes in. Matt, you first and then Martin and then Sue and then Loveday. So Matt Stokes, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so just on that point, uh, I did not know to whom Councillor Tudor had directed her comments. Councillor Tudor would have known to whom she directed her comments. And she's uh, gone some way this morning to confirming that it was a, a, a handful of individuals at the events uh, outside of County Hall. So she knows who she directed her comments to. When I reviewed this, uh, for me, uh, uh, it didn't need to be stated in the decision notice to whom the apology should have been made. Councillors are subject to higher standards of behaviour, and that's why there's a code of conduct. Uh, and Councillor Tudor, um, 
should have been able to work out to whom she should have made an apology because uh, I'd taken the view uh, or, 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 or sorry, I'd taken the view in agreeing with the early decision notice um, that those those words required an apology. Uh, I think it's uh, a moot point as to whether it was stated in the decision notice or there was other advice as to who to apologise to. Councillor Tudor knew to whom she had made those comments. Thank you. Councillor uh, Martin Alvey, please. Don, could you switch your camera off, please? Don Wood, could you switch your camera off, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Tudor, I just wonder if you could clarify. Um, obviously, you've seen the names of the complainants. Are any of those individuals named as complainants, individuals from whom you've received abusive emails or phone calls or other forms of, um, sort of lobbying or approaches? Yes. Yes, I believe I did ask that question as well, Councillor uh, uh, LV, but it's yeah, good to yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just want to be absolutely clear in my mind that so so actually some 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 of those individuals that are named are individuals to whom you have actually received abuse. Um, That's rather right, yes. than, yeah, OK. Thank you. Councillor uh, Nicholas again, please. Sue. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just uh, to clarify, um, apart from the ones that you've kind of like had the abuse from, have you had any support from any other of those um, people that were uh, protesters that day? Um, I've had over the last sort of since this has been going on, I've had um, a lot of emails and messages of support actually. Um, I don't know whether they were people that were at the protest. Um, I've had um, letters of support and emails and messages of support from people within my Cornwall Council division about this. Um, I can't say whether anyone who was at the protest has um, been, because um, I don't know. I don't know if it was people at the protest, sorry. And just to clarify, from my mind as well, um, you are well aware of the code of conduct and how we are supposed to conduct ourselves outside of you know, when in our role as Cornwall councillors. Yes, I am. Yeah. OK, thank you. And when was the last time you did code of conduct training, please, Councillor Chief? Um, I think soon after I joined the council, so um, that would be just less than three years ago. So uh, as part of the induction, we all went. Yes, yeah. yeah. that. yeah. that's great. Thank you. Councillor Jenkins, please. Sorry, yes, uh, um, I just wanted to clarify something with you, Dulcie. Are you saying that all those complainants who put in um, the complaint that you hadn't apologised are what you consider to be part of the original specific few that you were identifying? No, not all of them. Um, a fair number of them. I think it's 11 or 12, isn't it, complainants? Um, the rest, um, I don't know, but there certainly are a number of them in there, but not all of them. So in terms of what you suggest is the abuse that you've suffered from some of these people that you've referred on to the police, has any of that been taken forward? Um, it's been logged as uh, malicious communications. The idea, I was advised to do that um, by the police. Um, the idea being that if it ever escalated and anything happened, I would have a record of um, abuse or building up to it. So on advice for the police, I send on um, the emails um, and other stuff, and um, several of them have now been logged as malicious communications. Thank you. Chair, okay, you're muted. Thanks again, lovely, thank you. I, I do that so that I don't get any interference and I keep forgetting to unmute. Uh, I can see that Professor Dean, you have another question, you put a tick in the box or an X in the box. Yes, thank you. Councillor Tudor, I just wanted to clarify, you said you had um, code of conduct training in, in 2000 or approximately <laughs> three years ago. Um, following these decisions by the uh, Council uh, Standards Committee, did you look at the code of conduct again? Well, uh, no, I was, a, I was, I had conversations about the code of conduct um, with the officers. Um, but I didn't specifically go and look it up. Um, but yeah, I had detailed conversations about which piece of the code that I was supposed to have um, um, broken. Yeah, I looked into that, sure. Uh, with, with the officers? 
Um, yeah, I had several conversations with officers about it, yeah. And other councillors, actually, yeah. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else, please? I can't see anybody else indicating. But I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking you, Councillor Tudor, for uh, being very frank, open and honest with us this morning um, and, and giving us your side, as it were. I'm now going to ask the monitoring officer, please, uh, Mello Sullivan, to come in. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so I just wanted to take this opportunity to provide the committee with some advice and um, also to advise the committee of my role um, when we enter into private session shortly. So the remit of the committee today, members, is to consider whether to take any action in response to the failure to apologise. The committee may choose to take no action, censure or take other action as defined under our arrangements. Whatever decision this committee takes today, it must be based on the facts heard and the documentation that's been received and considered today. Any decision must be proportionate to the failure to apologise. I will be entering private session with this committee today and my role will be purely to advise that committee. Any advice that I give members in private session, I will then confirm that advice when we come back into open session. I hope that clarifies, Chairman, the role of the committee and our considerations and our deliberations during our private session and confirms my role and what I will be confirming when we come back into public session. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, OK, so uh, we are going to go uh, into closed session uh, and I'm going to read out the necessary uh, paperwork that goes with that, which I now promptly appear to have lost. <laughs> oh, I've it now, got it. Okay. Um, I propose that uh, the press and public be excluded from the meeting whilst the committee debate determines what action, if any, is to, uh, to be taken in response to the failure to apologise, relying on paragraph five. Schedule 12 of the Local Government Act 1972 and the committee determines what action, if any, is to be taken in response to the failure to apologise. Um, so I make that proposal and I ask my vice chair if she's happy to second that proposal. Happy to second that, chair. And we will vote on it again. Angela, if we could do it by roll call, please. Yes, chairman. Councillor Wilson. Yes, chairman. Councillor Jenkin. Or Councillor Alvey. Four. Councillor Frack. Four. Councillor Gammon. Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. And Councillor Pugh. Four. That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you. Can I ask all those who are not members of the committee now to please leave the meeting? Democratic Services will uh, contact you when we uh, require you to come back in. Uh, and also, please, I can see Sue James has left and so has uh, um, Simon and a couple of others. So if you are not a member of this committee, you must leave now. Um, and also for Richard, please, to pause the live feed. And if Angela, you can let me know when everyone who is not a member of the committee has left and when the live feed has been paused. Thank you. If you can let me know when that's happened. Yeah, I will as soon as I've had confirmation.
again to see if we can clear that problem and put back on. Right, okay. So do we know now if sound is coming through? Is there a way of checking? Chairman, I think we're just relaunching it and then we'll test it and then we'll confirm. Okay, so are we uh, happy then to go uh, on with Ellie or does Ellie need to start again? Chairman, I suggest you just pause the meeting for a second still until we've had confirmation the live stream is working. Um, okay. And then um, I think if Ellie can just, um, get, uh, everything Ellie said is covered in the report. Um, so I think it should be sufficient for Ellie just to say it's covered in the report. And then I think she was going to hand over to Jenny Payne. Helen, you put your hand up. Yes, Chairman, thank you. And um, we've had it confirmed by the live stream operator that the sound is back on. Excellent. So if the sound is back on, uh, and, and uh, Loveday is asking, do we know when it went off? Uh, is that uh, it may have gone off during during our uh, summing up of our closed session? So we are, are we? No, we don't know that. We don't know the answer to that, unfortunately. But we will we will press on. We will press on. Ellie, back to you. Thank you, Chair. So um, to sum up, the, the report in front of you covers all those complaints which we've received for the last financial year. Um, and if you have any questions, the same, happy to, to answer them. Um, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Jenny now, who's going to fill, on, fill in um, with you all about the customer um, feedback, um, feedback support that they've been, that have been trialling. Thank you. Thanks, Ellie. Thank you, Chair. Um, I trust you all can hear me OK. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Thank you. OK, so I'm just going to cover just for a minute or two the changes we made to the centralised feedback team. So you will be aware, um, as we've mentioned it in previous reports, that we were trialling a centralised feedback team for the customer and support service directorate. Um, that trial has now completed and we have now made it a permanent team. Um, we have seen since the trial was running that there was a drop in escalation from step one to step two, um, that we have been able to be more robust in our lessons learned. And another, and there are a couple of other benefits we've introduced as, um, as, as starting up the centralised team. Uh, it's going to be a centre of expertise for customer satisfaction surveys, something we're passionate about across the organisation so that we get a consistent um, way of reporting what our citizens, residents, customers, service users think of us. We want to have a more robust lessons learned so that when we get feedback, we act on it and we use it because it is a really valuable form of consultation. Uh, we're going to carry on improving our performance indicators for customer satisfaction and feedback and also look at some of the more qualitative measures and not just the performance ones. We want to try to tap into more of the customer voice on how they're really feeling. And we want to also use social media and um, some of the interactions that we get through social media um, to do more with that feedback. Um, you will have seen that the uh, inquiry process for councillors has been expanded to cover MPs and very soon we will be doing a trial with parish councils as well. And um, there's only a select number of parish councils, so please don't think it's every one of them. We're trialling it with a couple to see if we can use the same process. Um, happy to take any questions, but that's all I wanted to really cover. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jenny. Uh, Love Day, you have a question. Yeah, well, question and a comment. Um, the question was for Ellie, but the comment is on the, the customer feedback and ensuring that um, we hear the customer voice. That's something that the Standards Committee has been very keen to uh, support uh, and push forward because we do know that if we actually listen properly to um, customers in the first instance, it doesn't escalate either to complaints or to um, local gov government ombudsman. Um, so so listening to what's coming in is really important so thanks very much for the work that's being done on that and having a centralized team i think does help um my question really was for ellie on the um or it might be not ellie i don't know but on the bit ellie talked about 
um, on the service areas with the highest number of complaints on page 36. A couple of times environment has come up, but this is the first time I've seen natural environment services. I'm not quite sure what that covers because before when we've been looking at environment, it's been particularly to do with waste services that's been an issue. So do we know why natural environment services are coming up and is it to do with changes in grass cutting regimes or is it something more systemic than that? Thank you, Loveday. I'm actually going to hand back to Jenny on that one because I couldn't, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but uh, Jenny, are you happy to, to answer that question or is it something I'm going to have to take away and bring back to the, bring back later? Uh, I think we're going to have to take it away because I'm not 100% sure what natural environment relates to, but I will try to get an answer now while we're still on the meeting and come back to answer you, Loveday. That's really helpful. I think, you know, it's just something to keep a watch on, I think. Um, you know that it seems to be one of the things it's not a relatively big team as far as I understand but um, it may be that there's more things in natural environment than I understand I did used to work for them but that was in a different era okay thank you any other questions then please members anything you want to add Ellie or Jenny nothing for me chair thank you Nothing for me either, Chair. Thank you. OK, I just need to point out to you all that um, I have been informed that uh, the sound actually uh, did not record from when we came back in uh, out of private uh, session into the public session. So once we've dealt with the recommendation for this report, um, I will ask Mel to, to again read out the decision uh, of the committee um, as regards uh, item four on the agenda. OK, so if there's no other questions, I can see no hands raised. Tony Williams has not indicated that neither has Don. Uh, no other questions. The recommendation is the committee is asked to note the local government and social care ombudsman's complaint report and to consider if any additional analysis and or actions are required. That's the recommendation I again so propose and I ask my uh, vice chair if have to second that. So noted, um, also noting during that, that the adult social care is still ongoing, as mentioned in the verbal report. Lovely, thank you. Yeah, that, that's great. Can we put that line in, Angela? Are yes, you happy you that? that. Thank you, thank you. So that's the proposal on the seconded. Uh, again, we'll go to the formal vote, please. Councillor Wilms. Four. Councillor Jenkin. Four. Councillor Alvey. Four. Councillor Frank. Four. Councillor Gammon. Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. Councillor Pugh. Four. That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you, Angela. Um, again, so like I say, unfortunately, the live feed did let us down a little bit when we came out of uh, the private session. Um, so we did propose, and that was agreed, that we would come out of uh, uh, closed session into open session. Um, that's been noted by the Democratic Service Officer, although people listening wouldn't have heard that, so that's a shame, but we have done that. So I will ask again, please, for the monitoring officer to read out the decision in relation to uh, item agenda number four. Thank you, uh, Chairman, and apologies for the, the technical glitch. Um, I will need to confirm my advice that was provided in private session um, because I did confirm I would do that in public session. So I gave advice that the original decision notices will still stand in relation to the requirement to apologise. Um, and I also confirmed that anything action taken today would not remove that requirement. I also advise the committee that there can be multiple options in terms of sanctions and I advise on the individual sanctions. I also advise the committee that it's the role of the committee to promote and maintain high standards of conduct so recommendations can be about the wider system and not just the specific complaints. Thank you Chairman. So I'll now propose to read out the decision notice that was agreed by the Standards Committee during private session. At the meeting of the Standards Committee held on the 21st of July 2020, the committee considered a referral to it made by the monitoring officer for Cornwall Council. The matter referred concerned the failure of Councillor Dulcie Tudor to apologise for a breach of the Code of Conduct. 
as set out in decision notice CC N0111920. In reviewing this matter, the Standards Committee considered the report and decision notice and heard oral statements made by the Head of Legal as Assessing Officer for the complaint and considered written and oral statements from Councillor Dolcey Tudor. The Standards Committee had the opportunity to question both the Head of Legal and Councillor Dolcey Tudor. After considering the matter and taking advice from the Monitoring Officer, the decision of the Standards Committee is to formally publicly censure Councillor Dolcey Tudor and request that she undertakes code of conduct training with an officer within two months. The committee identified that Councillor Dolcey Tudor has failed on two occasions to comply with decision notices, in that she did not apologise. Councillor Dolcey Tudor has reached the following aspects of the code of conduct. Paragraph 2.1, you must treat others with respect. Paragraph 2.5, you must not conduct yourself in a manner which is contrary to the Council's duty to promote and maintain high standards of conduct by members. Paragraph 2.10, you must not do anything that could reasonably be regarded as bringing your office or your authority into disrepute. The committee noted the personal abuse that Councillor Dorsey Tudor confirmed she has received in leading up to this complaint. However, the failure to comply with the requirement to apologise undermines her role as a councillor and the ethical standards regime. It's important that the Standards Committee continue to ensure and maintain high standards of conduct among councillors. The Standards Committee make a recommendation to Council that this public formal censure of Councillor Dulcie Tudor is read out at the next Council meeting by the Chairman of the Standards Committee. Thank you Chairman, that concludes the decision that your members made. Thank you and that was in relation to uh, agenda item number four which is a consideration of a failure to apologise by Councillor Tudor and it's important that uh, people realise that was a unanimous decision uh, of the Standards Committee and the lay and parish council members uh, were asked also for their opinions and it was a unanimous decision by them as well although they don't actually vote uh, at the moment but it was a unanimous decision by the Standards Committee. Uh, moving on to item number six which is the ethical standards complaint uh, that's in your pack on page 105 to 136. Again, I'm going to hand over to the evergreen Ellie. Ellie, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Can you see me all right there, Chair? We can see you fine. Fine, perfect, thank you. Um, so before you, you'll have the, you'll see you have the ethical standards complaint report. Um, we, it's sort of in two segments, because when we got the end of year of 2019 to 20, which is covered in the report, and furthermore, the first quarter of this financial year. So it's sort of split up into two sections, but I'm happy to answer any questions on either of those, of either of those parts. Um, so, Unfortunately, I think you've been all informed by Angela that when the document went to print, um, the Appendix 1 should have been printed on A3 um, and that actually has been printed on A4. So um, consequently, there's some data missing. So, but hopefully you've all been able to access the same online. But if you've got any questions in respect to the data, please let me know. Um, so we basically have, um, in the last financial year, we had 126 complaints which were received, which again, as well as the Ombudsman complaints, is actually a decrease. Um, last financial year, we had 168. It's quite a large decrease um, in the amount of complaints received. There's been no obvious trend to why that is. Um, however, they are picking up again now. Um, of those 126 uh, complaints, um, 18 of which were found, uh, members were found in breach. Um, this was compared to 21 of the previous year. Um, so, as I mentioned, quarter one of this financial year is also included within this report. Um, at the time of print, it was 25 complaints have been received. Um, since since um, since re since the agenda has been sent out, a further 12 complaints have been received. Um, this bringing the total at, as it, at the moment as it stands to 37. Um, again, a decrease. Um, this time last year, it was 56. Um, so due to, um, oh, I just want to mention, due to the backlog we've had of complaints due to officers being deployed elsewhere during the COVID pandemic, we have um, extended our procedure timelines temporarily um, and all complaints are advised of this upon acknowledgement of their complaints. Um, 
furthermore, um, at the request of the committee, as you'll see in quarter one, we've added another we've added another row where which um, provides a narrative of the complaint. So not only do we it not only does the report show which elements of the code um, have pretend, um, is the complaint relating to, but it also just gives a breakdown of what the complaint actually is. Um, this um, this will be done from going forward as well. So that's it, thank you, Chair. But if anyone has any questions, please let me know. Lovely, Ellie. Uh, any members, please, that may have a question, can you indicate again with a cross in the box or in the, take, the case of Tony, uh, put your camera on and give us a wave or uh, Don um, with the uh, hand up, please. Uh, Ellie, just a very quick one. We've seen a a sort of surge in complaints since councils, local parish and town councils have actually uh, started to reconvene. Is that correct? Yes, yes, Chair, that, that is correct. It's um, ever since, so but during the lockdown period, there, was, there wasn't that many complaints coming in, to be fair. Um, but since obviously, since a lot of virtual meetings, uh, et cetera, have been taking place, there has been an increase, yes. And is there an underlying reason why that is? There's no, there's no obvious trend, but obviously this will continue to be monitored. Okay. Um, Richard, I can see you there. If you put your, no, Richard, you haven't indicated, I beg your pardon. Uh, anyone wish to question, please, the uh, ethical standard complaint report? Then the recommendation is the standards committee are asked to note the ethical standards complaints report and consider if any actions or further analysis is required. Uh, Love that you've indicated. We've seen now you've indicated. Please. No, I was just going to second the the motion. It's fine. Thank you. Seconded then by Councillor Jenkins, proposed by myself. Again, Angela will go to the formal vote, please. Councillor Wills. Four. Councillor Jenkins. Four. Councillor Alvey. Four. Councillor French. Four. Councillor Gammon. Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. Councillor Pugh. Four. That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to item number seven on the agenda, which is the Standard Committee Work Programme. And I'm going to bring Simon in. Simon. What's going on? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, th I think everything's switched on successfully. Yeah, um, I can see it. Yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> um, with regards to the uh, work program, uh, I'm uh, to direct members to the main work program itself rather than the covering report uh, to, in, in order to be expedient and with one eye on the time. Um, we're not having a meeting in um, April this year. We've carried some certain things over, uh, which you've already heard from Ellie. Uh, with regards to the organisational complaints reports and the ethical standards complaints reports. Um, with regards to the work plan itself, um, we are now, we've added an extra comment for um, comments within the work plan as requested at the meeting on um, in January. Um, and the main, other main pe uh, piece of work which in there, other that hasn't been discussed to date, is implementing the recommendations of the Committee on Standards in Public Life. The um, members will be aware because we've already circulated the consultation from the Local Government Association with regards to the proposed model code of conduct and the working group will be meeting early in August to consider a response to that. So if members have any comments with regards to the consultation, could they please let myself or Loveday, who chairs the working group, know or just send, send, send it out to all members of the committee. What we'd like to do is include as many views as possible when the response is provided back to the local government association. And following that, then a written report giving a full update on the responses and other feedback we've received on the um, model code of conduct will be brought to the next meeting of the committee. I don't have a time scale yet for any further implementation of recommendations. I attended a monitoring officer working group meeting virtually uh, with the ministry um, in June and they were looking at starting a consultation with regards to sanctions, i.e. suspensions and changing legislation with regards to letting lay members vote again um, within a couple of months, but they wouldn't put a time scale on it at, at then because the, it depended on how COVID went. Um, there is another meeting with this body in September and obviously our feedback to the committee following that. Um, 
Oh, with regards to other other items in the work plan, Ellie has already mentioned the um, matters concerning the adult social care reports. And the one other thing I was going to mention to members was training, because we've have discussed this before um, with regards to delivering ethical standards training and doing some sort of firm film filming or doing it virtually. With um, the advent of this wonderful technology we now have before us, um, I have been discussing with IS and there is a potential that we can do a, a training session. I can deliver this from home and that can then be recorded and be accessed at a later date. I'm still discussing this with IS, but the aim would be to get some form of training delivered by this means in um, late August, early September. And then we could look at then doing that again for May next year. So after the elections, there would be current training that will be online that all councils will better access. Um, it does take away a little bit the ability to ask questions at the time, but it does mean that it's more accessible and saves people driving out to different venues. Um, the only other thing was that with regards to the work plan, rather than working, reporting a work plan to the committee in its entirety, each um, meeting, was to adopt the same procedures as with scrutiny committee and that would be to report the outcomes from the work plan to you and then to refer, refresh the work plan at the start of every year at the start of the new municipal year so the meeting in july would be a fresh work plan pre presented to the committee for the coming year and i'm happy to take any questions from that thank you lovely first sorry i had to get to my button um, yeah, it was uh, a couple of things. One, I think the training is a really good idea. If we can get a film of um, of you, it might be that you need to do it in a council chamber or something um, as part of um, you know have, having something that lasts a long time. But you know that ought to be able to be organised as well, um, and um, it could then be used as part of a session whereby there was questions and answers after the film or something like that so it, yeah. i think it is feasible to do that and uh, we need to record simon as uh, part of part of that i reckon um on the um work program the adult social care final report is not shown anywhere so i don't know whether it should be the october meeting or the january meeting as you're aware it was going to be this meeting um, that they were going to tell us how they've got everything working because the previous reports have been on um, we're doing good stuff now but we haven't actually seen the data and the results so whether that wants to go down in October or January I don't know bearing in mind that obviously adult social care have been heavily involved in the in dealing with Covid issues um, it might be fairer to leave it till January but it needs to be put down there somewhere. Um, um, I, I think uh, could I just interject there uh, look, very quickly while we're on that subject in terms of it uh, as the working group is meeting very shortly to consider this um, we can either we can do a update written report to the committee in October and then perhaps a final written report in January if, 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 if you're happy with that. that. That sounds reasonable yeah yeah um, the other thing is um, uh, we're going back a year in when you get to April. I'm sorry. April 2021. <laughs> I don't want to revisit 2020. It's not been that good. Not so far. No. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll submit that thing. <laughs> Anyone else any questions for Simon, please? Can you indicate with a cross in the box or in the case of Tony, put your camera on or Don, please put your hand up. Rob Bishop. Yeah, Rob, uh, Rob, yep, yeah, you're there. Yes, Rob. I just thought you'd like to see me again, Simon. Always, <laughs> always good, Rob. <laughs> uh, thank you. And um, I just thought I'd like to say um, about what, what uh, Loveday just proposed. Perhaps um, you could record it in our usual meeting room with the Sanders Committee there with a few well uh, planted questions for you. And that are no ones that we've had previously and likely yeah. to have. And that would be a, a good venue for doing it. And uh, there would be a bit of atmosphere as well. Yeah. It, I mean, in a socially distanced manner, I think we can, we, you know, I, I can suggest that I have a discussion with the tech, techie people about that anyway. Yeah, well, well, uh, yeah, it's a large enough room and I think yeah. uh, we're getting to the stage where we can see each other in the flesh again. Thank you. Yes. 
Let's keep our fingers crossed that we actually have a, a face to face meeting in October, Rob. That would be lovely. But of course, we are we are we are bound by uh, the rules uh, and what have you, um, and, and we must abide by them. So hopefully by October, they may be relaxed even further. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, please, for Simon? On the work program. Then the recommendation is that the work uh, plan for the standards committee for July 2020 to June 2021 as set out in the appendix be approved. Subject to any amendments, the standards committee may wish to wait, uh, may, wish, may wish to make, um, and I so propose. Uh, Love, are you happy again to second? Happy to second that with the inclusion of the adult social care timings. Excellent. You've yeah, got that, Angela. That. That's Angela, Angela here, Democratic Services. Okay, I'll um, take a vote. Um, Councillor Wills. Four. Councillor Jenkins. Four. <laughs> Councillor Aldi. Four. Councillor Frank. Four. Councillor Gammon. Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. Councillor Pugh. Four. That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, we'll move on then. Uh, any other business which the uh, chairman considers urgent? I don't have anything for you uh, on that. Uh, I'm just checking my notes. No. Um, so we will move on to, uh, again, exclusion of the press and the public. And this is to do with uh, uh, consideration of continuing status of an unreasonable persistent complainant. So the committee is asked to consider a resolution which I propose that the press and public be excluded from the meeting for the business specified in the following item on the grounds there is likely to be disclosure to the public of exempt information uh, of the following description. Uh, information relating to an individual and information likely to reveal the identity of an individual. And I so propose, again, if lovely, you're happy to second. I so second. Thank you. And again, a formal vote, please, Angela. Councillor Wilms. Four. Councillor Jenkins. Four. Councillor Alvey. Four. Councillor Frank. Four. Councillor Gammon. Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. Councillor Pugh. Councillor Pugh. Oh, we've lost Richard. Oh, he's a present, but he's on mute. Yeah, Councillor Pugh. Yeah, yeah, four. Lovely. Thank you, Richard. Thank That's you. Unanimous, Chairman. And again, I will ask that you confirm that those who are not meant to be in the meeting have left the meeting and that the live pause again has been, oh, sorry, the live stream again has been paused. Okay, I need to check that the live stream is paused first, um, turned off. Helen, can you confirm? It's Helen Snell, Democratic Services. So I've requested that.